What's up, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite podcast on planet Earth. It's the Anything Better podcast, guys, with Paul Verzi, Bill Burr, our producer out there in Beverly Hills, Andrew Themlis, the Greek freak, and you guys today are listening to episode 44, or as they say in Spanish, cuatro, cuatro? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that that's how they say it. Uh, Bill, what 44s do we have? Cat en Francais. Uh, greatest 44s of all time. You got to go Hammer and Hank Aaron. Huge. You got to go Reggie Jackson, the straw that stirs the drink. John <laughs> Riggins, my personal favorite, an old cowboy back in the day. Robert Newhouse blocking for the great Tony Dorsett. It was 4-4 blocking for 3-3. Three, three. Um, who else? Do I? Pistol Pete Maravich. That's a great one. Slapping the ball all over the place with his sloppy, his floppy socks. Uh, and the logo. And the logo. And the logo. Uh, no, no, he's not the logo, is he? No, no. The NBA? No, Jerry West is the logo. Jerry West was 44? Is that right, Andrew? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was him dribbling up the court to lose to the Celtics yet again in the finals. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> uh, and then who else? Danny Ainge, speaking of a Celtic. <laughs> Uh, solid player a great gm and there you go those are the 44s in sport that we know episode four four episode 44 it's all gonna end with wayne gretzky you realize that then where do we go episode 100 yeah you got to go double zero robert parish jim otto yeah because we never started with zero so the last one you know who else i think was uh was it Gilbert Jason Williams is zero. Yeah, I think somebody did wear zero, zero. But somebody said to me, somebody goes, dude, what are you guys going to do after 99? And I go, we'll just do like the hundredth thing that's happened. The greatest hundredth thing that's happened. So that's what we do on the show. We adapt. We adapt to something else cool. Um, I got to tell you something. I was sitting in my house last night, jumping off my couch. I'm going, oh, oh, my wife is shopping for Christmas online. I'm sitting on the couch. My dog is looking at me. My New York Knicks go into that rat house in Brooklyn, that fucking rat infested, that, that disgusting place. They all in- flipped. Yeah, they, they all, all flipped. flipped. All those are all Knicks fans that flipped. I don't know. The Henry. witness protection <laughs> program inside that fucking questioning. arena. <laughs> you may fold on the questioning. Um, Bunch but- of Henry Hills sitting in the fucking crowd. It was literally one of the best basketball games I've ever seen. Reggie Miller's calling the game going. He literally took himself out of of being a professional. and He just goes, oh, my God, this is awesome. I missed this. It was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Whoever had the ball last, the Knicks end up losing a heartbreaker. Bad foul call, 112 to 110. But I will tell you people this. I would rather take my young, scrappy, defensive play in New York Nick team than that pile on bunch of baby fucking rats who have hall of famers who complain out there. God, I love the Knicks. God, I love the Knicks. There you go. I can't argue with that. No, I'm trying to think of a world where another team comes into Boston and, you know, into Cambridge, you know, the Cambridge cocksuckers, right. And then everybody's going to fucking jump on them and not be Celtic fans anymore. I, I don't know. I don't know, Paul. It's a weird one. That's a weird one to me. That's actually a great point you just made. What do you do if a new team comes into Massachusetts and one of your family members or close friends goes, dude, I'm just jumping ship. We don't know what we're doing there. I love these new colors. It's like, it's sickening. It's fucking sickening. Yeah, but you know what the advantage is? is You get to see who people are. (laughs) All these people that you thought, you know, were all right. You're like, oh, so that's all it took. Yeah. Now, in defense, if you're a really old Nets fan, I can go with that because they were originally the New York Nets with Dr. J. Julius Irving. Yeah. Um, when me and you saw that old man who walked up to the foul line and did this, remember? And then he would, he would go like this. Oh, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It was him and his wife, and they gave him a jersey, and he would go like this, and then when the guy would make it, he'd go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of the few things I enjoyed about being in that uh, that stadium. Um, Paul, I got to tell you something, Paul. I got to yeah. tell you this fucking right now. My Christmas shopping is done, and all the gifts are wrapped. 
What? I already have a tree. I bought a little spray bottle. I spritzed it. I got the water in. I got the little thing in there to keep the thing alive. I'm done, dude. I got some knickknacks here or there. I got stocking stuffers left, Paul. I'm <laughs> dotting all the I's. I'm crossing all the T's. Oh, Billy's going to have it. Oh, Billy's going to have his freckled feet up, drinking <laughs> eggnog and smoking a stick as everybody else runs around. Oh, my God, I got to do this. Oh, my God, I got to do that. Well, you should have planned earlier. Should have been like me, Paul. This year, yeah. I decided to be a role model of the holidays. I think you I think you got all your T's cross your eyes. You're seeing the NFL good. December 1st, there's no Christmas shopping. I'm sure the dishes are done. I mean, you're on your game. The kid is on his game. Not only the dish is done, Paul. I check the butter thing to make sure if we don't have any butter, I take one out. So the next morning, if I make pancakes or I make some toast, that is spreadable butter. Nice. It's not a hard, yeah. Yep. I went by the hardware store. I got a little countertop thing to wipe it off so it stays so fresh and so clean. Like Andre 3000 used to say, right? So fresh and so clean. Was that with them? Outcast. Well, yeah. Well, my room is a mess. Okay. My room is a mess. I have no shopping done yet. But guess what? Paulie's got his last show tomorrow night at a casino in Pennsylvania. And then the kid's not working until January. How That's you fuck- where I blew it. That's the shit right there, buddy. I'm going to tell you, everybody listening, if you want to, if you really want to know how to live your life, Paul Verzi is the man to go to. Paul understands. Paul texted me happy Thanksgiving on Wednesday night and said, don't text me tomorrow because I'm going to have my phone off because I'm not a fucking animal. <laughs> the man just understands. I sat there all day. There, happy Thanksgiving to you too. <laughs> Dad, why? Hang on. Happy Thanksgiving yeah. to you too. Yeah. Bless you and your family also. We have to get together. To- Paul said He's- happy Thanksgiving to the people he needed to say happy Thanksgiving to and then shut his phone off. The way you just said you see who people are when a new team comes and they jump ship, it's the same thing during holidays and important times. You want to see a fucking t- people that are like this when their kid is tugging on them saying, like, come play with me? No, can't do it. Okay, can't do so it. You're calling me can't, a we bad can't have father. It. I get it. You know what I don't no. like? I don't like the fucking happy Thanksgiving exclamation point. It's like, do I really have to fucking respond to that? There's nothing personal in there. How do I know you just didn't send it to like send? Yeah. Yeah. The fake excitement. Happy Thanksgiving. So you get credit because the exclamation point. It should if you if that's if that's a mass text, you should not be able to use any other punctuation other than a period. <laughs> Don't pretend yeah. like you're so excited for me and my fucking happy Thanksgiving when you're really I'm in the way. You're getting me out of the way. Yeah, you, Paul, you, next you, year, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm telling everybody, happy Thanksgiving. I'm shutting my phone off, and I'm shutting the phone off. That's I didn't text, what I want to do. I didn't text anybody because after Paul sent us that, I was like, well, I'm not texting anybody tomorrow. <laughs> I, was yeah, like, I didn't text I didn't you. I didn't text, I didn't text anybody. Beautiful. I was like, thanks, Paul. All I did sometimes is I had to check, you know, when I was sitting watching the Lions, I looked at the fantasy score, put it down, but I, had, I threw the football with my son. I'm not a fucking animal. Not an animal, dude. Fuck that. Oh, you know, you know what? You know what? On top of all of that, you're reasonable. I'm, I mean, that's, that's that we've known that. <laughs> <laughs> and you are not impressed by any bridge unless it has an overhang to let you know. Yeah. I don't yeah. like those Paul, little Paul ones. Paul is a suspension bridge. Don't come at me with you just, you know, one side of the bank to the other. No. Yeah. What about a bridge, Paul, that is not a suspension bridge, but if you jumped off it, you could still die? It's like make an impression. If you're a bridge or in tunnel, make an impression. That's all. I want to feel it. I what do you What it. do you like? What What do you What do you look for in a tunnel? Dude, I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by bridges and tunnels, but I'm not going to lie. When I'm halfway through a tunnel and gridlock, I start to panic. I start to picture fucking water shooting through a tile, and then everybody out of their cars running in a panic and getting trampled and drowning to death. I know that's weird. But that's not if, what you do, though. What do you mean? You run towards the water and you do a big inhale and you get it over with quick. <laughs> you run at that I water you, like I, it's fourth and goal and you know you don't have an offensive line and you just fucking end it. 
I thought you had something really to say. Like, no, you got to go no. towards it. I thought it was a strategy. Dude, I you know? guarantee you there's somebody who's so fucking claustrophobic and every day driving through the fucking uh, the, uh, the Lincoln Tunnel. What's to stop you from bringing a whole scuba suit and just having it in your back with the tank, the whole fucking thing? Can you imagine swimming out and all these bodies just oh fall? my God, <laughs> dude. push them out of the way? Wow, that's like doomsday prepper shit, dude. And then you got, then you have the rights to the movie. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. And then they they fucking they they you know they they do the thing to your fingertips and they find out you have explosive residue on you. And then they find out that you're the one that detonated the shit to make the because you had a hero fantasy, <laughs> dude. Paul, we're dude. writing for Lifetime right now. All oh we need to do is I make a woman be the person that catches the guy doing it. <laughs> dude, first of all, going back to the other thing, don't never. I want to make this clear. Don't ne tell me. Don't. Never ever wish me happy birthday by texting me HBD. You might as well say, I take that as you don't give. I'd rather you not say it than just text me HP, HBD. What Those if they're driving and their kids and they're risking their kids' lives? So that's all they can do before they rear end that semi. And I need the follow up text explaining that. You need a video. I, no, no, no. I need the follow up text going, hey, dude, the only reason why I did HP, I was in it with the kids. I just didn't want you to think I forgot. That's a nice. But the people that just do that, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to yeah. fucking hear from you. Yeah. It means it means you don't it, care. It, it's dude, I got the some teeth. You're getting credit for going the full distance. And, you know, that, it's, it's bullshit. I got something for you, too. That's going to fucking blow your fucking minds, dude. OK. Right. Yeah. And it just I just I just, literally just thought of it now. I go out to dinner last night with my wife and two kids. OK. And um, we're sitting down and Stacy starts telling a story. Now, I wasn't being rude, but she was I was not. My kids were acting up. So as I'm trying to tell my kids to chill, dad, can I have your phone? Dad, she's trying to tell me the story. So then I wasn't paying attention fully. And I just go, wait, what, what happened? She goes, forget it, dude. You're not listening. And I go, no, no, I'm sorry. And in my mind, I'm like, this better be a good story. Okay. Cause I'm just in a mood. Right. She tells me that she went to school with somebody in elementary school that she recently reconnected with. And the husband of this woman that she went to elementary school with, was a guy who was a two-time felon. And there's a podcast out about it, and now they might make a movie. The reason I thought of this is because you said movie rights. So in the state of California, I believe, if you go three-time felony and, and it's something, you go to jail, they fucking throw away, if it's, if depending on what it is, if it's armed robbery or if it's a robbery felony in the state of California, if it's three times, you go away for a really, really fucking long time, like life. Him and a buddy decided to rob another house when he had this shit on the line. This is fucking fascinating. And the guy who lives in the house leaves and they see through the crack of the door, a safe. And the guy leaves and the fucking husband goes in and they steal the fucking safe, but they just take the whole safe and they get it out of the fucking house. Well, you have they it bolted to the floor. You buy a safe big enough that you can't carry out. Go ahead. They open the fucking safe and in it, they find diapers, some that are wet, some that are dry. They find lubricants. They find a hard drive. And it's tons and tons of disgusting child baby porn. And the guy decides, the guy who finds it, decides I have to wrap myself out to put this fucking monster away, even though it's my third fucking felony, because I can't have this guy there. So he fucking sends it in. And they fucking and they're trying to do a plea with him. But because it's a felony. But then there was another guy with him, dude. And I think the guy ended up doing like 14 years or something. Stacy said she's halfway through the podcast. They're trying to get movie rights. But this guy opened this safe and saw a fucking monster, dude. Saw something that's out there in the world that just needs to be fucking stopped and did that. And I was just he was like, like, hey, I knew I was fucked up. But gee, this guy. This He's guy's in crossing court, lines. Like, here. judge, judge, what are we doing here, judge? I mean, what do we, what do we no, but like that, that is so, so I guess the point of the I story didn't is rape his daughter. <laughs> Stacy's story got real in good. His fat face. I took money, Charlie. Fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
So Stacy's story got good. <laughs> yeah, that's story a great story. Real Dude, that's like, that is movie shit. Like, if you saw that in a movie, you'd go, nah, that would never. Like, that's a that's crazy, dude. He couldn't have dropped it off anonymously? That's what I no, was thinking. But no, but you need the evidence. You got to be like, listen, I took this out of his place and this was, oh, wow. I thought, like, can't you drop it off with a letter? But no, you got to you gotta be like, look, we ran into the fucking house and then they look you up and then you're fucked. But um, good on that guy. Can you imagine that guy, that fucking creep when he came home and his safe was gone? Oh, boy. <laughs> no, he called. No, he called. He he actually, Stacy said in the podcast, he called up saying some things were taken of mine. He he wasn't. He was like so freaked out that he called to get because he figured he could just get his safe back. So he called and like so he kind of took part in it too. Oh, gee, I would have been like, that's not my shit. <laughs> I've never seen that before in my life. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna go have sex with an adult. <laughs> yeah, and it's like how? Yeah, I mean, that's like who holds that? I mean, that's wow. Just, yeah, dude. But that makes you think, what else is out there, man? That makes you think, what else is out there? The fucking evil that lurks. It actually made me feel better about my anything bad in my family. Why can't uh, evil hang out, Paul? What? Why does evil have to lurk? Come on, if it's so bad, man, why don't you come out in the open, man? <laughs> Stop lurking. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was... Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to follow up. He caught a pedophile. I mean, you've taken this podcast in a direction, Paul. Now we're no. on our way. Now we're talking evil. I got something for you. I was I was thinking this the other day, like, you know, uh, this mixed martial arts stuff, Paul. Yeah. I mean, basically, if you walk in there and you have hands and feet and a head, they're going to teach you how to do it. Why don't they do any sort of background check? Like, this should be like a fucking thing. Like, you know, they got the, the, that app you can find your cell phone. They should have like that for a sociopath. Or a fucking predator or a toxic person. Why would you teach him that shit? Because you know what I mean? Oh, I see you think, what you're like, saying. All right, I'm going to learn self-defense and all that fucking shit. Well, what's stopping the uh, the lunatic from learning it too? I mean, they'll teach it to anybody. Those fucking whores down there at the dojos. It's hard to find out a sociopath, though, because they're so good at manipulating. You know, that's... Yeah, for you or I. That's true. But experts? Come on. Paul, wait a minute. You're pretty good at reading people. Yeah, I mean, a, a sociopath, it's hard to... I know a couple sociopaths that they kind of came under the radar, okay? <laughs> no, there's a couple people that came under the radar because they yeah, come Yeah, but were they sociopaths or they were just like selfish people that put up a front? What's your definition? Let's do this. Andrew, you could get in on this too because I don't know the... the what the difference between somebody that is unbelievably narcissistic and self-involved versus a sociopath because I've well, tried I don't to think a narcissistic person could actually like, uh, you know, watch somebody. something. Yeah. Watch something terrible happening and have no feeling for it. Like, um, past a certain level, like narcissist, they don't see ever that they're wrong or whatever. And in there, not seeing it usually continue the pain with whoever they're with. But I would think like a sociopath is like, uh, yeah, who is that? Somebody the terrible, one of these guys. He used to do this fucking thing where they, uh, this, Ivan? this horrible torture. Ivan the terrible, I think. Yeah. So they they would have this 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 thing. They would have literally this thing that had like a point on it. They fucking make you sit on it and eventually it would just work its way right up through your body and it would come out. It was just agonizing death that took forever. He was known for doing it. And he went to meet with this guy and they had a whole field of people sitting there in moaning and dying of, of, in, in this thing. And he just sat there eating fucking lunch with this guy. That's a fucking sociopath. Wow. Yeah. I mean, now a narcissist yeah. just wants to get credit. Like, Hey, that was my idea to put everybody, everybody on those things. <laughs> and it's and I feel like that torture device should be named after me. I don't know, Paul. This this is this is beyond my pig. All right. Well, here, how about this? We'll take no, this. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, that's you summed it up. Really? Well, thank you, yeah. Doctor Themelis. Well, I read. I mean, I had to. You know, <laughs> you I got concurred. A computer, I got a computer over here. Uh, it you says, uh, are a sociopath. <laughs> oh, by the way, Doctor Phil, you gonna... need to stop torturing people by ripping up their rectums. He Am I right? Divorce. Am I right? Yeah, uh, let me ask you this. 
Let me ask you this. If two tadpoles want to become frogs and there's only one puddle. Sorry. I don't know where to go with that. Uh, everybody pointed out he did not get a divorce, by the way. That, that wasn't true. Oh, he didn't? No. <laughs> I thought he was going through a divorce. Oh, I thought he was I, going I found no articles. Everything just said that he was married. It was just all about his old, his ex ex wife. Oh, uh, oh, good, good. Married. So he, keep, he kept his house. All right, Philly, good for you. <laughs> he probably paid her to stick around. <laughs> you will ruin everything. Um, dude, I little- have the money to make you disappear <laughs> you are fucking things up um our house is so big i could just say you're in another part dude <laughs> dude kfc from K- kfc from kfc radio barstool yeah had the funniest fucking rant and i'm giving him all the credit this is not something on anything better but dude i just lose it he goes how in the united states are we not talking about the joe biden farting with the royal family dude apparently joe biden went and met with prince charles and camilla and they were at the climate change summit and he fucking ripped ass in front of camilla and they said she's not stopping well, talking is it about camilla it. or kamala it's camilla it's camilla camilla and yeah, and like Dude, apparently so out of all, the fucking loop. all over the news in Britain, like not only did she find it funny, she's just like, "Dude, this guy fucking pissed me shit himself." <laughs> and in the U.S., they're not even saying this. Dude, I was fucking crying because apparently he had that incident at the Vatican with the Pope, where what he had did to he do? Cha- where he had to cha- he like sharded like with the Pope, and he had to change his suit. What? And- <laughs> yeah, dude, it's real shit. Like. And like they saw that, like, oh my god, <laughs> Joey B is having a Joey B is having a rough go, but the kid's like farting shit in his pants, dude. I was fucking crying, dude. If and- you're just walking around shitting yourself, listen, we really have a bad way that we treat old people in this country. Like they don't have any knowledge left. But if you know you're stammering through speeches and you're shitting yourself, I think it's time to give it over to uh, Camilla. Well, in fairness, the shitting himself, they, they, it, it, yeah, the, the shitting themselves. It was they, Kamala, right? No, Kamala Harris. Camilla is Prince Charles is the one that he looked like. Oh, all for. right. That's where I got confused. Yeah. I, don't, I don't watch Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> they said that obviously they can't prove the sharding, but they have good reason to believe that he had an incident at the Vatican and had to change suits. But the fart in the royal family apparently was heard. Dude, Joe Biden. <laughs> dude, dude, Joe He's Biden. losing control of his faculty. Faculties? Is that what you say? F- fa- is it faculties? I don't know. My, my fellow Americans. <laughs> it is time to tighten the belt. <laughs> dude, I said it on my special, in my new special. The way you have to be 35 to be president, you should not be president of the United States of America after 65. I don't care. That should just be that window, dude. You have that 30 year window. And if your second term happens to overlap and get you to 69 or 70, fine. But and, like if you, that, and if you shit yourself, I don't care what age you are. If you shit yourself after that term, it's over. If it's your first <laughs> you, dude, shitting yourself with the Pope. I mean, dude, it's like, that's like yeah, another well, dude, thing. Those guys are murderers over there. You know, I was saying this the other day. You know, remember when Sinead O'Connor got all in trouble for tearing up that fucking Pope picture? Yeah. She turned out she was right. Yeah, what was it? I don't even know. What was her reason? I don't fucking know. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as bald people, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We just start going. Up. She was like, fight the real enemy. She went, Nyan. and everybody's just like, hey, that's the Catholic Church. Blah, 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 blah. Then you find out years later, they were out there fucking raping kids. Yeah. Yeah. She, I, mean, I mean, if you can come back around and Monica Lewinsky's a victim, I mean, I, what the fuck? We can't bring her back? Uh, go write a book. That was, was that Chappelle thing. You're so powerful. Somebody sucks your dick. You get to write a book. You write a book about it. He goes, go, ahead, go be somebody. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't hear the, that one. The evil that lurks in the world 
is horrible. That's why I stay in the woods with my family. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, Paul, dude, you, you you live up in jerk off country. What do you mean? There's dads running through the woods in their underwear, jerking no. off to your curtains and all of that. Sh oh, yeah. Those no. suburban guys. No, but I'm not even in the suburbs. I'm in the country, man. That's what I mean. Oh, stop. You're not in the country. This is pretty far, dude. I'm in the woods, man. You okay. see, me. you're not in the country. Like I'm gonna go in town get some provisions. Oh, oh, you mean like you mean like Quakers some... driving down the street yeah. in their little fucking yeah. horse and buggies? No, no, no. This no. <laughs> Lancaster, PA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're no. always up there going, dude. I got acres. I got acres up here. You, you, you live on like an an acre, I think. A little which more. Is than amazing. I have, I have a little more than an. I have like an acre and a quarter or whatever. Yeah. Some okay. people up here have like fucking eighty acres, but. Um, yeah, yeah no, I'm not in the backwoods. Bankers, like, where, retired like, gangsters. Yeah. There's a lot of shit that goes on up there, Paul. I'm sure. There's a lot. I bet there's a lot of stories behind some of those homes up there. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of billions. There, there, there are out here. Yeah. yeah. Dude, the whole Hollywood Hills is full of people that stole credit. <laughs> <laughs> not all of them, but there's a lot. There's a lot of people. What There's a lot of people living in the valley looking up at a house that they should have been living in. <laughs> All right, everybody. It is Manscaped. That's right. It's the holiday season, and you don't know what you get as a gift or a stock, and you don't know what to give as a gift or stocking stuffer. Well, today's sponsor, Manscaped, has the tools to guarantee you win this year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition. Okay, Manscaped is the leader in men's below-the-waist grooming. <laughs> and they have served more than 4 million men worldwide. Um, if my math is correct, that's almost... Yeah, you got a bustle in your hedgerow, as Robert Plant used to say. You want to get the Manscaped. <laughs> yeah, uh, and according to... If the math is correct, that's almost 8 million balls. 8 million balls have been... It's amazing. I've been I've seen the light of day since they were first time since they were 15 or 16 years old. 14, well, I don't know. They put all these hormones in. When do kids hit puberty now? Like nine? Oh, dude, it's changing, dude. My son, I was looking at Lucas. He's got a little bit of a mustache. Because it's there's nuts. so many hormones in the fucking food. You realize that? Uh, yeah, it's brutal. Um, get 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com with code better, but they shouldn't be canceled. Paul, hold on. I, I lost you. What'd you say? I have a, a delay. I said, but they shouldn't be canceled. No, what? No, of course not. No, they're just putting fucking animal hormones into the fucking, whatever the fuck they're doing. The food that children are eating. You got some five-year-old kid with a fucking nest over his fucking sack. Yes. Um, <laughs> Manscape, the gift to give your prepubescent, prepubescent, how do you say it, five-year-old. All right, go ahead. Manscape's best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0 which is the top of every man's wish list this year. The dads can't stop talking about this. The teens secretly buy this. Uh, and one more guy talks to me about shaving his nuts. I swear to God, Paul. We'll love you for it. Um, now, these are our picks for Manscaped's surefire win stocking stuffers. Number one, the two-in-one shampoo conditioner just launched Kill two birds with one stone. Number two, the Manscaped Cologne. Ooh, that got me excited. I'm not going to lie. Anytime I hear Cologne, I get excited. Infused body wash. Three, uh, the Shears 2.0 Luxury Four-Piece Nail Kit. And four, the Crop Mops. Okay? Ball wipes for your stanky balls. My balls aren't stanky, but anyway, Manscaped. What do you need Cologne for? Yeah, right. Uh, these formulas are all vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free. Sulfate, uh, sulfate free and paraben free. So, you know, your products are legal. And while you're at it, get 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com with code better. Whether this is your partner, your dad, your brother, your friend, get them something that they will actually use. And it's almost sure to get a laugh, get 20% off of free shipping at manscaped.com with code better. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. 
All right. It's solo stove. You know, you got a stove and you, you need a friend to light it. Uh, you don't need that problem anymore. We got solo stove. You know, there's nothing quite like the feeling of gathering around a warm fire on a cool evening. And a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove makes your outdoor moments even more memorable. Because instead of having to constantly dodge the campfire fumes, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the fire. With Solo Stove's Cyber Monday sale, you can get a great deal on a Solo Stove fire pit. Upgrade your backyard with the Solo Stove fire pit. Enjoy the mesmerizing flames. What are they doing, Paul? They're dancing all around like the thoughts in your head. And all the opportunities to create more good moments and lasting memories. <laughs> Make the time with your friends and family richer with the so Solo Stove Fire Pit. Solo Stove Fire Pits are brilliantly engineered. You know, world leaders, if they all sat around a Solo Stove. It, just, it, makes, it, does, it makes me feel like a guy cooking alone, though. <laughs> just alone. Well, it's not really a stove. It's you should see it, Paul. It's actually beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The fucking beautiful. It's like it's like this wedding ring with flames coming out of it. Wow. Um, solo stove fire pits are brilliantly engineered. Listen to this, Paul. This is brilliant. Okay. It's made with premium grade three hundred four stainless steel. I mean, come on, and three hundred sixty degree airflow system that maximizes the efficiency while minimizing the smoke. You're getting all the heat, Paul, without the smoke. Did you Fully say three point four? 304 stainless steel. Wow. I mean, that's up there, Paul. That's up there, dude. You know, that's okay. not 2.0. That's like one of them fucking, uh, no, 304, Paul. 304. Ah, even better. Yeah. Like if you threw for those yards every fucking week, you'd be on the Pro Bowl. Easy to light with a few bits of stata. Your fire is blazing in minutes. Perfectly portable. Paul, you can take Solo Stove with you on camping trips and more. Dude, we should have brought that fucking thing to Lambo. Shop Solo Stove's best deals every, ever during their Cyber Monday sale. Now through December 5th and get, 5th and get $10 off with the promo code BETTER. B-E-T-T-E-R plus a lifetime warranty and free 30-day returns. Just go to solostove.com and get $10 off when you use the promo code better. I don't care what kind of fight you get into with your wife. You go out there and you crank that thing up. You give her a little glass of wine. Huh? Then what could she say? Nothing. Nothing until tomorrow. But you got that <laughs> night to yourself. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? It's paint your life. Paint. Imagine I just sang it. If you're looking for a special gift for something, sorry. If you're looking for a special gift for somebody this holiday season. I like that idea. What, singing one? We'll do that on yeah, one. Yeah, well, you, you, you should have gone a little more crooner. Something if you're looking true. for a special gift for someone this holiday season. Something truly unique and personal. Yeah, this is the big intro. My kind of town, right? They always started slow, right? Yes. Yeah. All well, this could only happen with paint your life. Do, do, do. And only happen in a garage like this. Where the fuck is my fucking wife? She doesn't do shit. Sorry. Go. We've got a great idea for you. For you. At paintyourlife.com, you can At have a paint your fucking life. life. Sorry. Not oh, sorry. <laughs> Dude, I'll fucking do the whole thing. Um, at paintyourlife.com, you can have original painting by world-class artists done by hand from any photo at an affordable price. It's good. That's it is it is actually pretty cool what they do with paint your life's. Uh, compilation pro uh, compilation portraits you can bring together family members who never had the chance to meet. Get a professional hand painted portrait created from any photo uh, at a truly affordable price, or create a portrait of a family member without the need for everyone to be there for a family photo. Here's the process you choose from a team of world class artists. You know, Joseph Stalin would have loved this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take him out we don't need um, he doesn't exist anymore uh choose from a team of world-class artists and work with them until every detail is perfect you can order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes quick and easy process get hand-painted portrait in about three weeks 
meaningful personal what the fuck was that a meaningful personal and can be cherished forever makes a perfect holiday gift for somebody you love uh or for yourself at paintyourlife.com there's no risks if you don't love the final painting your money is refunded guaranteed guys see there you go no risk and right now for a limited time offer get 20 percent off your painting that's right 20 percent off and free shipping Get this offer, text word BETTER to 64000. That's 64,000. That's BETTER to 64,000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Bill, if you were a singer, what would you? What would your, be your genre? I couldn't see you going hip-hop. What would your genre be? Would they you go rock? Sing. What? Rappers don't sing. Well, if you were a musician, I should right. say then. I'll rephrase Rappers the question. Rappers use that auto-tune. I think, unfortunately, so do singers right now, which is fucking brutal. I think a lot of people do, but I'm just saying. But singers are still singers. Singers can't rap either. They try to. And rappers try to sing. They both try to. They just won't stay in their own fucking lane. It's like, they listen, try to I, sing, I yeah. sing, and then you come in and do the guesty fucking rap thing. Right? Or you rap, and then I come in and do the guesty, and I fucking sing, sing the hook. When me, when we, well, I'm a little younger than you, but when I was coming up, what listening to rap, it was the rapper, the true rapper. Like it would be like method man. And then method man would have a singer do his hook. Yeah, and it would, yeah. it would be that now they do try to collaborate it with, uh, Ghetto superstar. That, that is, is what, what you are. And then they go back into the rapping. Yeah, exactly. That was Maya. And, uh, that was Maya. And was it old, was it old dirty bastard? No. Uh, no, that was Mariah Carey. Mariah, go back like oh, babies to right, pacifiers. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, his son looks, rest his soul. His son is is touring with Wu-Tang, and it's him. It's a young, old, dirty. It's him. Same hair, looks like him, comes out crazy. It's, it's bizarre, dude. It is him. We saw them do... Um, me and Sal went to see them do the 36 Chambers reunion, the first album reunion. Oh, wow. And, that must have been great. Dude, it was nuts, but it was funny. Like a couple of them were like heavy sitting down. It was hilarious. Like, hot like one, hot two, hot three, hot. <laughs> Old dirty bastard live and uncut. <laughs> do they start? Do they croon it at this point? They were, one of them, one of them, there's like 12, but one of them was like, Jacques really Cousteau big. could and never he, get this low. <laughs> <laughs> he I love that speaker. album. No, dude, he just sat on a speaker rapping and everybody knew he was just too big and tired. Nobody cared, but it was the first time I saw a guy just resting while co in a concert. In the I never understood how Wu-Tang ever made any money. You'd see him live. And there was like 90 of them with those extra large T-shirts with the towel. And it was just like, all right, so you're playing outside. All right, you're probably walking with 30 grand. There's 90 of you had to pay for the fucking. I think there's 12 of them. Andrew, can you look that up? I'm gonna, I thought I'm there gonna, was nine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list as many as I know. Ready? So there's the RZA, the Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Method Man. Um, Capadonna was one of them. Um, Raekwon the chef, Ghostface Killer. Now I'm done. I don't know anybody else after that. All right, so that's eight. Inspect the deck. Yes, inspect the deck. Yes. Nice. Look at me. You thought nice. I was really white. I'm only kind of white. Inspect the deck is kind of a dope name. That's nine. Who else are we missing? Uh, you forgot Master Killer. See, Master yeah. Killer, I feel like wasn't always. And you got. And you got. Okay. And Capadonna got. didn't didn't uh, become an official member till later on. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought for some reason I thought he was like a solo guy, but I was. And that dude. was ODB. That was with Maya. That was Maya. Oh, so. Too. Um, dude, the Jizza Liquid Swords, when they all went separate, and Method Man did his, and Raekwon and Ghostface, the Jizza Liquid Swords was fucking nuts maybe my favorite one and then when we were in high school the big argument was wu-tang or tribe 
And we would be at parties, at keg parties, and it would just be guys screaming at each other. Oh, fuck you. And it was like Tribe Call Quest or Wu-Tang Clan, because that was right in, you know, 90, 96, 97. And that was like, they were both like here, you know, because that was like, dude, it's crazy. I didn't even realize. How about it. Uh, when, when nice. Kiss all did their solo albums? Which one did you like best, Paul? Uh, Kiss? I liked the Paul Stanley's best. You just pulled that out of your ass. Yeah, I did, but I had you for a second. No, I never, I was, I never really listened to that band either. No, uh, I thought they did the song Beth, but I think that was, or is that was that song uh, Alice Cooper? Beth, what can I do? It's this really sad fucking ballad. Yeah, that's Kiss. Like, that's Kiss. That is Kiss. Yeah, Bill, did you like that? Did you, was your generation into that grunge Seattle shit like Pearl Jam and Nirvana and that or no? um not my friends no like we came up there's two sides of gen x there's the metal side and then there's um um the post nirvana nirvana and on i mean i love jane's addiction i, I love that sh like dude i just listened to that went on a hike i listened to that ritual album front to back i mean that album is a fucking masterpiece um but like you know, I came out of the 80s, the 80s, nothing but a good time. I mean, it was all just fucking, yeah, just having a fucking good time. And then all the Seattle guys came in, like, oh, I don't feel so good. And I don't like being a rock star. Ugh. And it was just like, Jesus Christ. I mean, we all have problems, too. I wouldn't dump my fucking day on you. But I understand you had to kind of, like, push back. I wish oh. I was like you. The older I get, dude. Easily amused. That was one of the most condescending fucking lines ever. I'm like, am I am I nuts or is this guy calling me a fucking moron? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, look at that shiny thing, Kurt. Oh, I wish I was like you. All right. You know, I like going to the malls. I like tap on solos. I'm sorry. I guess I am easily amused. Yeah, I, I think the older I get, I actually see what people like the Nirvana more. I didn't like it before. But I thought no, I love Nirvana. Nirvana's pretty was pretty fucking good, man. No. Um I do, but I can deal without the, without the, all the fucking whining. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll tell you a band that's underrated, not talked about oh. enough. Def Leppard. Not talked about enough. I got to tell you those the uh the uh the high and dry and uh photograph Dude, photograph and that dude, they were those guys were the shit, man. That drummer yeah. with one arm that drummer well, he didn't have one arm on though. He he got a uh he between that tour and the hysteria one. Um but I mean to keep he, going, to keep going with one fucking arm as a drummer and his a, band to keep him on was fucking amazing. Yeah. Dude, that's and they still wrote happy songs. And then these fucking grunge guys come in with all their limbs and they were just fucking just gloom and doom. They just brought Seattle weather to everybody. See, the metal bands were down in the L.A. sunshine, peroxide. Blood, and all Dude, that I'm, shit. I'm downloading. I'm downloading Def Leppard shit today. Think I give a fuck. I'll put that right on the top of my list. I'll rock that in my car right now. My Lexus is going to be pumping Leopard the next two days in my neighborhood. How you yeah, like that? Rick Allen is drumming on on high and dry and on photograph. I mean, he just was like he had his own fucking thing going on and he was playing traditional grip um i get yeah. hysterical nah hysteria. that's hysteria fuck that was for the chicks pour some sugar on me that's where they lost me when they did pour some sugar their hair got a little more poofy like they got a little more like <laughs> no they always i thought joe joe elliott was joe elliott's a fucking man that guy was like drinking like bon scott level you know what those I really guys started? boozed dude that guy you know what he said he's doing the commercials for virgin australia first class and he's like, oh, you get a, he was just talking. He goes, you get a full room with massage. You're drinking. The guy just sold me. I was like, this guy knows how to live. <laughs> oh, Joe Elliott. Yeah. He's talking yeah, about that guy. Those like guys are all, I, I loved all of those guys. I listen, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Dude. Soundgarden. I mean, for me, that's Jane's addiction and Soundgarden. I love them. Allison Chains. I loved, um, and then I just feel like. It, then it just became, rap went mainstream. That was listening to Wu-Tang. 
Did you listen to came... Biggie? Did you listen to Biggie? And, oh, uh, yeah. Patrice Nas? was. Yeah. Patrice was. Well, I remember being a Tower Record in uh, Newbury Street. And he goes, you nice. get this shit yet? And I go, yeah. It's like, uh, no, no, I have not gotten that shit yet. And he goes, you <laughs> should get that. So I, I had that on cassette tape, uh, the original one. I don't know where the hell it was. But it is now. But then they ended up uh, taking it back because uh, Puffy didn't get the rights to a lot of those samples, or the laws changed. I don't know what happened. So then the album went away for a minute. Now it's back. I think they just paid everybody. But yeah, I I was a 100% Biggie guy, dude. New York, but you know who else? Dude, Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Getting Tribe Call Quest, Run DMC, Hollis, Queens. 50 cents. Hello, Cool J was from there. I think, yeah. If you look at the yeah, guys, you're, you're that, out of my element here. No, I'm just saying, if you look at the guys, the hip hop guys from Run DMC, almost to like present day, Jamaica Queens 50 Cent, a lot of guys came out of that borough who like really, really, I mean, of course, you got like Staten Island and Brooklyn, but dude, Queens has like real deep roots in, um, in hip hop. Wait, uh, Staten Island has a lot of rappers. The only guy I ever heard from there I thought was Method Man. Well, well, all of Staten, the island. All of the. Those. <laughs> <laughs> I remember well, that shit. Why, well, why did where you live? I still to this day don't understand why where you lived or where you were born was like part of the. You guys thing. started that shit. I think New Yorkers started that shit. Where I it was heard the guys battle between the know. boroughs. And then you guys just went out in the world and it's acted like everybody should give a fuck about I don't, your We got to look into that. I don't know about that because I know like Oakland guys would be like, yo, Oak Town. And there was a lot of that shit. There dude. was no Oak Town growing up. Are you sure? Like, geez, all right. I mean, I didn't know who started. Guys from Brooklyn. Oh, anytime you meet a guy from Brooklyn, you're going to know he's from Brooklyn and he's going to tell it to you within the first 30 seconds. What time is it? Well, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm from Brooklyn. It's yeah, this one comedian. It's like, I didn't need to know that you're from Brooklyn. I get it. This, this one comedian goes, you could be anywhere in the world and be like, yo, where's Brooklyn? Because you could be on the moon. And one guy go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's going to go away, though. <laughs> That's going to go away, dude, because I know some of the fucking whitest dudes ever. And yes. they are fucking. Where do you live? And that's and why I hate the Barclays places, Center. They're saying that they fucking live at these places that, like, I used to hear on people using references on, like, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy on uh, 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 Comedian or, or some of the rap um, or some of the Tyson story, Brownsville and shit like this, that, like, I don't even know where those are. And I just remember going, like, man, if I went there, I would get the fucking shit kicked out of me. That's all you heard. I remember yeah. Eddie Murphy's album. I was on Bushwick and something or else, and the whole crowd in the early 80s in New York went, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And now I, I yeah. knew that one of the whitest dudes ever. Where do you go? I live off of Bushwick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you go to the fucking Barclay Center and they're going Brooklyn. It's a kid in a fucking yarmulke. Get the fuck out of here, dude. No, dude. It's, it's yeah, the Knicks fan. It's coming back to that. It's coming back to shitting on the Nets. No, I'm just saying, fuck these Williamsburg people wearing Biggie. Show. Where Brooklyn at? It's like Biggie was a Knicks fan. Biggie was a Knicks fan. <laughs> Biggie's Biggie. W- Listen, Biggie would never tr- turn that. I mean, I, I I can't say in definitively, but Biggie was a Knicks fan. I man. would like to think you know? he wouldn't. Dude, I'll tell you a diehard Knicks fan who's unforgiving. Dude, Tracy Morgan is courtside at the Knicks. He wore a chain that I have to say was one of the most ridiculous things in a bad way as far as gaudy. He wore a chain, Bill. If, if a, Picture a cucumber around the neck. It, Mr. T never wore shit like this. Right. It was literally, it looked like a cucumber thing. And he's just sitting there. He pulls it off though. Like for me, it's too much and gaudy. Tracy pulled it off, but he goes nuts. He starts talking to players. Yeah, that's wrong. He goes nuts, dude. I love it. He sits near Spike. He goes fucking nuts. Oh, God. What well, look, I he's look, I mean, Spike goes crazy. Spike goes in and it looks like he buys up the whole gift shop before oh, the game. Spike, I think, almost got kicked out. Spike runs up to the – he knows all the officials. He'll literally start arguing like a coach. He'll start stomping his feet. He, he's, like, next to the coach, too. <laughs> it looks like he's an assistant. They <laughs> <laughs> should get him a little suit. <laughs> a little suit and a clipboard. Honorary assistant coach. 
Dude, Tracy Morgan pulls off the biggest chain ever. I got to show you a picture. I can't go that gaudy, dude. I can't go much more you know, than what I You know got. talent, right? Comedian talent? I love talent. So I, funny. I sent him a text the other day. I said, what, what, is, uh, <laughs> what is Richard Nixon and the New York Knicks both have in common? They both resigned after 1973. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He laughed, said I was childish. Because yeah. what he does, he's a Knicks fan, that guy. Yeah. But then he sort of watches the other shit. He goes, I'm a New York sports fan. He doesn't give a fuck if the Knicks, or I mean, not the Knicks, I'm sorry, if the Yankees and the Mets, the Giants and the Jets. He goes, I'm a New York sports fan. So all he does is wait for a Boston team. You guys are like split aces, you know, you're doubling down in every sport. So he just waits for somebody to fucking beat one of my teams, and then he gives me shit. So I go out of my way to trash the Knicks. Death taxes and hopeful Nick Nick fans in November. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, we have to win to get that stink off of us. That's it. Oh, I'm not trying to bring it down. I like the Knicks. No, no, no. We have to win to get that stink off of us. It's just something that it's. Oh, you're 19... talking to a Celtics fan. We know all about winning. Don't fucking Nine... ever. Don't ever do that again. What, what do you mean? You, what do you mean? You guys yeah, know well, what it's like to not win for a long time. No, we don't. What are you talking about? The Red Sox didn't win for a long time. I'm talking the Celtics. Oh, yeah. No, Celtics are yeah, winning. Celtics don't. don't you dare say that. What are you going to say yeah, next? Yeah. That, that fucking MSG is a basketball mecca? <laughs> People come We're from around the world to gather there to beat the Knicks' ass. <laughs> <laughs> the world's most famous arena. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can't even defend that. I can't even defend that. It's like, yeah, and it's not fun. It's All the right. place I where it's feel the like place. I'm knocking ice cream out of your hands. No, Sorry. it's the place where fucking Jordan came and Reggie came and LeBron came and Kobe came and everybody goes and gets their 50 point game at their garden against us. And I can't deny it. But Bill, I'm going to tell you this right now. And for all you listeners, just know this. The day that we win, the day that we hoist that up. How old do you think you'll be? What's the over under, Paul? I think I want action on this right now. I got a hundred bucks, Paul. And I, I will think, take the over. I think that the Knicks within eight years will be champs. I got a hundred on it. All right. I think within eight years we'll be champs. You got a hundred on I it? I got five on it. There was a one, right? From the early nineties. Uh, we got uh we I got still got have hundred bucks on that. And we still have a two hundred dollar bet that you're gonna Paul, do. Paul, I swear to God, when I have to you're seventy. If I have to fucking pay you that hundred, I'm gonna make sure I buy a box of Kleenex to go with it because you're gonna be sobbing. You're a man of your word. I can't, I can't believe they find it. You are gonna fucking cry, Paul, like Josh Adam Myers when the Capitals won the fucking Stanley Cup. Dude, me, me, Jerry Ferrara, and my son, and uh, you know, Petey. Pete Davidson, huge Knicks fan. A lot of my friends, Sam Morrell. There's a, there's like five of us who truly give a fuck. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to see those last two. I'm not saying they're not, but I, I got to. Paul, you every October. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hello. Dude, have you seen what the Knicks have been doing? Like, I have never seen somebody get so excited after three fucking games in my life. It's actually painful to watch because I love you as a friend and to just watch you. I know. Dude, they're passing the ball. I'm, I I, I'm, who's that Asian kid, dude? You almost fainted. Oh, Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin. When Jeremy Lin came around. Oh, my God, yeah. dude. Like you were on the phone every fucking night. And I was just sitting there going like, please, God, just, just like, get him to the Eastern Conference Finals, which I think they might have. I don't understand why that guy was so fucking amazing. Were they not using him the same way in Houston? Dude, it was really weird. He would drive to the hole and do a crazy move. It would go in. He hit a fucking game winner at the buzzer, like on his 12th game of being on this run. And the coach just goes, like his coach, like nobody. And then, yeah, then once he got traded, he kind of turned into just like this media. He just went on this magical thing, dude. I don't know. God bless him for it, but, you know, I'm putting that onto Lucas now. 
unfortunately, not, not unfortunately, I'm, my son likes the Knicks maybe more than me, which is because of me. But I said to Lucas, I go, Lucas, what are you going to do if they win? And my son just goes, oh, dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, it, you don't understand the elation. Like, Stacy doesn't talk to me. I put my hood on last night. You want to laugh? We're down 110, 107. There's 13 seconds left, 10 seconds left. We inbounds it, hit a three. I go, oh, oh. And Stacy just was shopping and she looked. I got off the couch, put my hood on, and stood like this in front of the TV. I mean, Bill, I want this. Like, you well, don't know. The understand. hood on is sort of passive, like, don't fucking talk to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 She knows. She knows when the Knicks are on, we have an unwritten marriage rule in the marriage. When the Knicks are on, there's no chores. I'll do anything after. I said, I was like, I got to do the cat litter. I'll do it halftime, you know, but until then, no talking. There's just, you know. Yeah. What, what out of all your teams, out of your Red Sox and your, your Patriots and your Celtics, which do you yell at the TV the most or pace around the most? Give a fuck the most truly in your heart. Oh, gun to your head. Like, who's your baby, man? Who's your baby, Bill? Because there's definitely one. No, there isn't. Because, of Paul, you have to understand that I don't think it's ever been acknowledged. You have to understand that the the Bruins, their number one rivalry is the Montreal Canadiens, okay, who are the most successful franchise. No, I was at that game with you. Yeah, we went to that game in Montreal. Right, and then the Celtics were going up against the Lakers, the two fucking behemoths of the league. So those games are like, you know, yeah. Michigan, Ohio State in two different sports. And then we got the Yankees and the Red Sox. Yeah. So the Red Sox and the Bruins were the doormats to the Yankees in Montreal the whole time I was growing up. The Celtics actually owned the Lakers until right in the 80s. The Lakers started coming back and they won five and we won three in the 80s, right? And then they fucking bought a bunch after that. That's, you know, whatever. Um mobbed up refs, you know, um, and then, which isn't their fault, but it is what it is. Um, and then the Patriots were like, it's like, we weren't even in the league. Like our fucking stadium was a joke. Like there was like high school teams in Texas had a stadium, like the, like the Schaefer stadium, Sullivan stadium, Patriot stadium, that fucking thing. Yeah. And then, you know, the Sullivan's, it's it, it just one of those things like the Patriots. I never even, th- I, I remember one of the Patriots won their first Super Bowl. I was like, I would have thought the Red Sox would have won a Super, uh, World Series before that they would win it. I got to the point, I didn't think the, the, the Bruins were ever going to win the cup because when we finally got the, by the Canadians, we beat them. Those fucking Edmonton teams were just juggernauts. Um, I, like, dude, I have to be honest with you. Like, I can barely watch. The big dude, well, the Pats first fucking Rex Ryan in the Jets. Like, I mean, when we lost that playoff game to them, oh my God. Do you I stay mean, quiet? Fucking do you, brutal. Do you stay quiet? Like, it is true though. When you love the big four, and the big four meaning basketball, baseball, football, and hockey, one of your children is going to be two are doctors. You know, like my yeah. Yankees were doctors, the Giants was a lawyer. The Knicks are just still at home taking bong hits, getting yelled at by his parents, never getting the shit together. That was the Patriots for a while until you have this legendary, legendary. That was run. everybody but, but the Celtics when I was growing up. Everybody was still living at home. And then the Celtics <laughs> were the the Celtics was like the fucking he was the like bills. the guy that just married some loser chick and had a couple of yeah. fucking kids, and then he was just out yeah. there having to put the whole thing on his back. That's what the Celtics were, but um you know, I was just reading about that trade, the Joe Barry Carroll trade. We traded that pick to the Golden State Warriors. We got Robert Parrish and a pick that turned into Kevin McHale. And wow. and then everybody gave Joe Barry Carroll shit. His nickname became Joe Barely Cares. And But you look at his stats. The guy was an all-star. You know, he didn't play that long. But... Um, I don't know. He got a ton of shit. You know, it's just one of those things. He just got, he, I, he was one of those guys. He got way more shit than he should have. There was a guy, Charles White, that came out of the uh, USC, had a drug habit, was able to get past it, had two all pro seasons, and nobody ever talks about that. You know, rushed for a thousand yards, I think, one season. 
So what is, I got one for you. This is a great thing to talk about on this podcast. 44, by the way, guys, 44 going into a little bit of overtime here. want to thank all the listeners, please, please continue to rate and review Spotify, iTunes, everywhere you get podcasts. We truly appreciate it. We have new merch coming out. You can be able to go to the merch store. You'll be able to get hoodies, t-shirts. The new design is incredible. Thank you guys for that. I got one for you, Bill. Out of every moment that's given you joy in your sports world, what's your favorite moment where you could have cried in joy? Is it, is it, I mean, I guess the easy guess would be, is it when the, um, you guys won the world series or do you have another moment? Uh, yeah, that was definitely up there. Um, yeah, I'd probably say the red, the Red Sox run was so magical just because it was so long. Um, yeah, I would say that, the, yeah, it was probably number one. finally beating the Yankees, celebrating the way you did too. Oh, three coming back from oh, oh, four. Oh, three was the usual. No, no, no. You were down. Oh, three. Oh, down. Oh, three. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. came back and you won four. The Yankees ran out of days. We'll get them tomorrow. That's what we kept saying. I ah, will get them tomorrow. We'll get them. No, I know, dude. It's three to one. Of course, they're going to win one. I know it's three to two. The guy stole the base. It just and then the nightmare hit when Damon hit that dude. When my my buddies First went in Grand Slam, I was driving into Universal Park. I just pitched a show and that was the closest sports bar. And when I, I was driving up that hill screaming with dude, the, on the radio. Hopelessness. The, my buddy got tickets and I go, dude, I'm not I don't I, I didn't go. And the hopelessness in my gut when Damon turned on it. I actually see the hit now. I visualize it vividly now. When that shit went up there, when he did that, and we went down, whatever it was, four nothing. And I'm I'll just, never forget the silence in dude, Yankee oh. Stadium, dude. It was it was the silence. Was the place? Bars. Who's your daddy? Oh, All of that. Nineteen eighteen. Everybody was bars, shut up. Homes. People were like, dude. It was a sickening. Then you started like reaching out to people, going like. Uh, dude, at least it's the first inning, dude. It was that you want to talk about shot hurt around the world. That was a bullet shot to the fucking head, dude. I know. And then you guys all ran for cover afterwards. No, I'm happy for you guys. Yeah, I'm happy. Like every all the Yankee fans that I knew that have been rubbing my face. And I remember even Regis Filburn I was going, all right, you know, you want it. Okay, let it go. Well, well it's like you guys have been chanting 1918 in our fucking faces. You're going to get a little shit for this. Um, well, my favorite moment hasn't happened yet. But when that, when my, my, here's my dream. Can I just tell you my dream? I just want to put my dream on episode. You can't 40. tell me the giants beating the undefeated Patriots in the fucking the, Super Bowl. The, the giants, I'll tell you the two moments, the giants beating the Patriots in the Super Bowl. When Burris, when Burris was open like that. And I thought there was a flag and there wasn't that one, but I got to tell you, the other one was beating the Mets in the world series, dude, beating the Mets. I was jokingly going to bring that up. I was going to say Clemens, you know, breaking Piazza's bat. No, no, no. Winning the win. You got to understand the, the friends that I had, the shit talk. I had friends going, go, go position by position. We got Ray Ordonez. He's there with Jeter. He's right there with you, dude. And we would be in bars going. We got Benji you. Molina. Dude, we would get it. Yeah. Beating that team at Shea. Oh, I mean, dude, that was like, I remember Joe, Joe Torrey going. I thought my job was, he goes after, because, you know, Steinbrenner cared about beating them more than anybody. It was like, you got to beat the Mets. It was the Mets and the Red Sox, but he wanted to be the team in New York. He, he was like, there's no Mets. It's just us. And when they did it, Tori goes, it was like pure Nirvana. That's what he said. He goes, it was done. He goes, we, we did it. And then he goes, and then a couple of years later, it's like, my job is on the line again, but like, Beating the Mets, and yes, Burris catching the ball to beat the undefeated Patriots, but nothing will be what my dream is. And what my dream is, is it's 100 to 100. That's amazing to me because the Mets-Yankees series was just such a foregone conclusion and boring. I was just going, they're not going to fucking beat these guys. No, because the way that New York – got to understand, dude, they're, they're, there's a I was living there during the time, and I, I mean, the maybe hatred. I was outside of it. No, the hatred of the Met, the hatred the Mets had of us and the talking was it. But, dude, it's 100 to 100 at Madison Square Garden. It's game seven of the NBA finals, and we are playing 
either who's a team that I fought. Probably I would say the Lakers, God willing, with LeBron. You guys have a rival? That's a no. The Miami Heat were for a while in the yeah, East. Yeah, that was a great rivalry. The Miami Heat were, but dude. Dude, if there were so many tough motherfuckers. Alonzo the, uh, Morning. The, what about what's his name? Uh, what about the the Pacers? The Pacers was a rivalry. Oh no, here you go. The the Bulls, the Chicago Bulls were a rivalry for years, for right. fucking years. But Bill, all oh, Bill. In the last, but in the last twenty, who? I'm asking no. in the last twenty. It hasn't. That's what sucks, dude. That's why it's like uh, there's not a known. It's yeah, almost yeah. like that. It's like an era rival. We have era rivals. We don't have the known rival. Like the but Celtics the thing is, have the Lakers Both teams forever. have to be good for it to be. That's what was so funny about the Reds. But the Red Sox had the decency to almost get there, I guess. But, I mean, as far as, like, looking at it, I guess, well, I mean, a rivalry doesn't really depend on success. It just makes you – because you look at Michigan. I mean, they lost nine years in a row. They've lost almost every year this century to Ohio State. And they still fucking hate each other. Ohio State still gives a shit. About I wish we had that. I them. wish we had that. But you got to let me fit. You got to let me just tell you the dream. You got to let me tell you the Sorry. dream. Sorry. Just no, just so I could put it into. I just want to put it into the world. I, I just want to. I just I just I just want to put it out there. I just want to I want I want to put this into existence. You Jim Carrey up to the heavens. <laughs> it's it's a hundred. <laughs> It's 100 to 100, and the Knicks are at home at the Garden. Everybody is standing, nervous. Game seven, LeBron's on the Lakers. Let's just throw that in there because that would give me nothing but bliss. And who would do it? Who would, hit the, who would hit the jumper on this team now? I would say either Emmanuel Quickly or like Alec Burks, just a sharpshooter, comes around the corner, three, two, lets it go. The fucking buzzer goes off. It falls in. I know what the garden feels like when that happens in a, in a big moment. If that happened, that's my dream. That would be, I would probably collapse. I would collapse in my son's arms and start crying. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we, you were all, we, we saw this together. Oh, dude, I would be, um, I'd start hugging strangers. Dude, I'm not joking around. I might kiss a stranger on the cheek. I'm being dead All serious. Right, you're not going to want to know the vision that I just thought of. What? <laughs> I was picturing when they finally win it. Remember when Marlon Brando's character was all old running around the garden and that kid was shooting the fucking bug spray at him? I'm picturing you shuffling around in like Nick's slippers. <laughs> Paul, come in. They're going to do it. What? Oh, come. Oh. Hit pause. <laughs> I hope I'm not that old. God, I hope I'm not that old. But, uh, dude, Josh Adam Lucas Myers, glasses. <laughs> I had to say to Josh Adam Myers, I go, Josh, were you fucking with people? I said, dude, were you, were you like trying to like be dramatic? Dude, Josh Adam Myers crying when the Capitals won. He literally was like this. <laughs> dude, I was, <laughs> I was like, dude, are you fucking with me? I thought I he was joking, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he had maybe too many onions in his crab kicks that day. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, the best one ever was when we were in that casino. We bet that soccer game, one of the oh. World Cup games, just because we like, we have to give a fuck about this. Let's put some money on it. You, me, and Bartnick were just sitting there with money, and we thought we were going to win the bet, as always, right? Algeria and, versus uh, Germany, we bet, yeah. Oh, my God, right? We bet Germany, and I forget uh, – Germany didn't cover something. No, no, no. We bet Algeria to win because on a hundred you won eight hundred, and they oh, almost that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All I remember was they cut to the crowd. Was it an Algerian dude, or was they going around the league with oh, highlights? No. Are you, are you talking? They were going around the league at highlights, and Argentina lost to Brazil. Oh, and they cut to the crowd of an Argentinian fan, and he was just standing there, this old guy, and he just went. <laughs> he started crying like that dude we were fucking howling i mean that's literally what are you <laughs> not one of those like no, that, yeah that's not an exaggeration he actually <laughs> like he lost control yeah. <laughs> dude it was like yeah i mean i've never given dude, a what, what kind of cry is that that's not sobbing 
No, you said it's like bubbling. It's like, it's like <laughs> blubbering. You saw his shoulder. <laughs> He's fucking. <laughs> I never what was great that. was they <laughs> held it on him before <laughs> when he was holding it together. And then he just Andrew, couldn't hold it in anymore. Oh, dude, Andrew, you could find that. Andrew, find Argentinian fan crying after Brazil beats him. Dude, you'll, you'll, dude yeah, I'm gonna, I got to give a shout out to fans of anything in South America because how much they go off at MotoGP, Formula One, rock concerts, and, and soccer. Let's be respectful. We'll call it football, what they call it. Like yeah. those fans, like when I saw ACDC live in South America, they were either in, I think they were in Argentina. I was like, oh my God, they must be like bored shitless when they come to the States. Was this in 2014-ish? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, but, hang on. I, am I... Oh, please tell me this is oh my it. God. If you find this, this is the greatest search I've ever, I don't know uh -oh. how, I don't know how I, I, I would ever find this. Oh man. Um, But dude. Fans down in South America, like they go fucking. They were in in. They they there was people in line to go to the ACDC concert crying, saying they changed my life. And I yeah. was just like, wow, man. I I I thought I was an ACDC. That's fan. why I'm never taking my kids to any soccer game like that or anything out of the country, dude. Because I'm not getting my kids trampled. Fuck that, man. That shit. When I see soccer games and they're all going oh, and the fucking thing is rocking, I want that actually scares me. I want no part of that. It's funny, but you'll go to an American one with a bunch of fucking animals. If I have a seat and I'm in the loge, I like the I like a I like a suite. They have that there. They got loge seats. Did you find it, Andrew? Dude, or no? I, I I went to a Premier League game. Uh, Arsenal versus Everton. And I remember Ars Arsenal was up one to nothing. They started singing this song, one nil Arsenal. What's yes. the matter? What? Fuck you. Oh, dude, I got to I'll share this with you and the fans. Today was today was my son's first cuts of making the basketball team for junior high school. And me and Stacy been talking to him and going at him and I've been sending him motivational stuff and he just texted me and he said shot the lights out, made it. And then I I dude, oh, dude, he said awesome, I made man. Four, he just said I made four threes, jumped out for loose ball, played defense. Uh, oh my god, dude! He, my son made four threes in a scrimmage today. Yeah, yeah, boy, that's fucking great, dude. That's fucking awesome. Fuck yeah, dude! Oh, I could cry. Oh, see, I got to share could this. You, could you could you cry like uh, this guy? Oh, oh Andrew Demless for three. This guy was this uh, the guy? I don't think I don't oh, think no, it but was he's this. got the right look though. <laughs> Let's see. He's gonna no no. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, I mean, dude. these people are devast. A woman, you understand? They cry over everything. Yeah. It's when you see a guy. She's <laughs> <laughs> no. They got to show the guy bubbling, dude. I bet he's the closer. <laughs> <laughs> he's the... I mean, these these guys they're the, they're the greatest sports fans on the planet. Like the level. No, dude. They... This was, they said that beating Brazil meant everything to them. Oh, uh, dude, they got kids in trees and shit. No, that's nothing, dude. You got to get the guy. Dude, look at those people, though, dude. They look like they're looking at a comet ready to fucking kill her. <laughs> <laughs> look at the kids still clapping, still staying. Look at that. Oh, oh my God. Have you given? Oh, a there, he like there he goes. There he goes. And it's totally oh. acceptable. I bet you think men live longer down there because it's okay to cry and get it out of you. Instead of throwing a remote, you actually just sit there and go. <laughs> they start fucking bawling. Have you cried? Have you cried over any sporting event in your life? A sporting event? Have you cried or teared up over any sporting event in your life? No. I, me neither. I just you just can't. Look, if they've done like a 30 for 30 about what somebody went through and you build it like that, but I've never just watched a game and a guy missed a field goal. Oh, and I no, no, I, I take that back. I take that back. When the Knicks lost game seven to the Rockets, my friend, I was in my friend's room and he had this big Lego thing set up, the Lego thing. And I went, fucking, I punched it. And I went, what the fuck? And I saw, when I saw, when I saw Ewing in the thing talking, 
And he was like, we thought we had it. I saw you. I started to get like, I didn't cry, but I just got real like, fuck, man. Like, <laughs> we had it. <laughs> you broke your Legoland? Was it, was it like, was it like this? Was it like this guy? All right. Oh, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God. No, but. I think, it, I think it's the next guy. It might be. Wait, 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 wait. It's not. Oh, it's this guy. I think it's this guy. I think it is this guy. <laughs> <laughs> they're just doing it on a loop, though. They no, got to get doing, them going. They're, they're doing the quick loop. It is. That's the guy. 100%. But, like, they showed it. They just have a loop. He he broke down. Oh, oh dude. God. Oh, these poor people, man. These fucking poor people, man. <sighs> Fuck that. They're beautiful people, man. They fucking. They live in. They're diehards, dude. It's no joke down there, man. It is no fuck. They they go all in. That whole that whole continent down there, man. They're, they're some of the greatest fans on the planet, dude. I'm telling you, that level of emotion they'll have at a, a rock concert, a fucking if 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 um, who was the guy? Was it Cena? That was was he a Brazilian driver? Seneca. Seneca. Senna, is that what the guy's name? Seneca. I don't know. Yeah, Seneca. they would fucking that guy would win. They would be crying. That the guy won a fucking car race. Dude, I, I mean, remember ACDC, they're the amazing, amazing fans. Bill, remember, Bill, Bill, we go to Bill's like Verzi. We're gonna do a show in Montreal and then we're gonna go to see the we're gonna see the, 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 the Formula One. And we're watching the Formula One. We're sitting there, we're all yeah, we're all there, we're having a good time. After like 20 laps, I just I you know me. I act like I see something and I figured I figured the whole sport out. I looked at Bill, I go. Nobody's beating this kid. This is the best kid in the world. Nobody's beating this kid. Yeah, Lewis Hamilton. I mean, I mean, all this guy does is win. I'm like, Paul, you've literally been watching this sport for 25 minutes. I got nobody's beating this kid. This kid. No, I mean, oh, look at the guy. I mean, he's he's you know he's, he's driving for Mercedes. He's got a nice helmet. <laughs> but then when we met Daniel, but then when we met Daniel Ricardo, you were like, well, I'm rooting for that guy. Cause he's like, you know, well, Australian, no, he was, he was, he was, he was, a, he was a Sicilian that lived in Australia from Australia. I was like, Oh, I'm rooting for this kid, but he but had he, the Mediterranean vibe. Paul he did. He had the smile. He, he let was, those Aussie um, people drag him down. He still was, that guy was fucking loose. He was laughing. He goes, I'm Sicilian. And I was just like, well, I'm rooting for this guy. He came in third that day. Well, Daniel Ricardo came in third for like, didn't he, after, after you started talking to me about all those, he came in third all the time with Red Bull, right? Yeah, Red Bull couldn't get past the Ferraris and Mercedes uh, for most of that time. And then he had like a falling out. Like, I don't know, things went south. And he ended up driving for, I want to say, Renault or something like that. Why can't, why don't they make the Formula One cars all equal and have the driver be the one that, be, why, how could a Formula One car be faster than the next? It's just the, the amount of money um, put into because yeah because they are dealing with the same rules and regulations but it just comes down to like money i guess so it's like a baseball team having more of a payroll yeah like it's um another thing too is that the cars are really wide and low now so you don't get as much passing from what i've heard like back in the day i gotta be honest with you i started watching some classic formula one races it was fucking scary like they were like i mean to, you know, anytime you do that shit, you're risking your life. But back then, like, death was right there. Like, people fucking died. No, dude, that motorcycle shit you sent me, that was some shit that I was like, those guys going that fast, flying off of cliffs and shit, dude. Fuck, that was nuts. Oh, yeah, that's the TT race in the Isle of Man. But no, but like, like MotoGP, dude, you watch clips of races from the 70s and 80s, and it's just like... They're just wearing leathers. That's all they got. And they're just flying around. And that was like, you know, as you know, it's just like aviation. They learn every time somebody dies. So just the way they had the track set up in all types, just it was just it was like when I watch those old races, like because I don't know what's going to happen. I'm on the edge of my seat. Like people could really get fucked up. You could get burned up like all kinds of crazy shit could. Um, could happen to you and uh i mean it used to i mean dude formula one they used to in the 1950s dude they would be going down a straightaway and the crowd was standing behind one yellow rope and two cars would touch and a guy would just go into the fucking crowd and people would die i mean it was fucking bananas wouldn't cars go airborne too wouldn't cars go airborne up? there was one a hood came off 
spinning like a Chinese star, went down a road and decapitated like five fucking people. You're just sitting there and you hear, boom, you're like, oh, and then you look back and there's five people in front of you with like a sprinkler coming out of their neck. What? And the race still goes. It just keeps fucking going. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. There was a German driver. I think his nickname was Crash or something like that. There's videos of a lot of those. Not the, uh, they actually have the crash where the hood went into the crowd, but you can't see what happens. But he went airborne and then he landed on those concrete barriers, dead on fire in front of this whole crowd. There's like kids there and he's just like, <laughs> just on fire. Oh my and God. And dude, when I say on fire, I mean on fire. Not like, you know, you know, just his shoulder. Like the guy was like, looked like a candle. Oh my God, dude. So That's I read this amazing book called The Limit, which is what they are all going for, is they are driving at the absolute limit that they can, as fast as they can fucking drive that car around a track without dying. And back then it was without dying. So they were just holding it together. And Fuck. everybody was trying to figure out a way to go just a little bit faster just now, to get what were, that edge. What were the top speeds there, Bill? Like 210? Back in the 50s? You know, I don't know. I would think it was still in the hundreds. But still, dude. I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh, still, dude. You fucking, can you imagine driving a car 80 miles an hour with a guy bumping into you and you're just sitting there with your fucking, from here up, just sticking out of the car? The only American got his first ride with Ferrari. It was about the, I forget the guy's fucking name. I only read the whole book. It was the first American possibly the only American, I don't even know, that ever won the uh, Formula One championship. We were considered inferior drivers. Um, the technology over there was always like better because um, uh, basically the, the geography is we had all this, we have all this space over here. So our shit was like, I'll fucking do the quarter mile in fucking half a second, <laughs> flying down, you know? Our, our designs were vulgar and they were, they, yeah. their roads were made out of old cow paths. So there was yeah. all these tight turns and shit. So their suspension, their designs, uh, to this day, man, their designs are fucking incredible over there. So there was a driver, when he got his first ride, the last driver died. And there was literally like, like a quarter size hole in the, floor, uh, in the floorboards, but it's, it's metal, that was there. And he realized the last guy, the reason why it was there, because the last guy got decapitated and they were washing the blood out. So, I mean, the doors are welded shut, so you just had to drain it out there. And it was so primitive back then that, you know, anybody else would have, would have just for drag, would have covered that hole up. <laughs> or at least they hadn't at that point. And it's like, all right, buddy, you're next. Jesus. And the, the dark uh, humor of Ferrari was Enzo Ferrari, you know, when he found out a driver died, like the rumor was he would say that's terrible and then immediately ask how's the car wow here's another great italian thing for you paul oof but uh, you know how you guys you know can find your way around some things there um so the reason why a lot of those ferraris are so rare you know those ones those baby boomers pay like 10 million dollars for um there was there's for some reason in racing um you were required whatever car you were bringing to the track you were required to build a hundred that could actually be on the road for regular people to, it was for, i don't know what the reason was that was a, that was a, a law yeah i forget what it was so what ferrari did was they're like we're not fucking wasting our time hand building a hundred of these they just started the first one they called number one was number 78 and then they would only make like 22. Where's number one? We can't file. We don't know. It's number 100. You know. Or they'd call, like, they'd, they'd make a number one, and then they'd make a number 13. You didn't have to have all 100 cars there. And they'd make, like, whatever. They'd only make a handful of them. So there was only going to be 100. And they made even way less than that. You know, a couple guys went out there and wrapped them around trees. So that's why they're, they, they're so rare. And plus, not to mention that, they're absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous cars. So This is 78. I don't know. They got stolen. <laughs> they must now, have you stolen. Sh now you shut up, you eat. Manj, manj. Oh, that was, that was my Sicilian grandma. Manja, manja. Manja. 
Yeah. Come on, just, just yeah. Now hey, you shut up and eat. That was the time I remember uh I took my wife to Little Italy and we sat down and this guy showed up. Really good looking guy, smoking hot wife, just had the whole fuck. You could tell the guy was just crushing it in life, right? One of those guys you just keep looking at him like going, Wow, look at him. You start thinking about how great his life is and everything. So the waiter came up and it was one of those places where you didn't really order, they just fucking brought you out or anything. And the guy was going, Yeah, hey, you know. Because the guy told all the special, I was thinking maybe blah, 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 blah. And he just goes like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. And he, I forget what he did. He brought over a plate. And he just sat it down. It wasn't what he ordered. He goes, now you shut up, you eat. And his wife fucking lost it. Absolutely fucking lost it. And you could tell, you know, but the guy laughed too. But I think he was just, you know, you know, you know, wives love to see that. They love to see another guy take their husband down a little bit. They don't want to see you lose. But, you know, animosity builds up in a relationship. I can tell you this. She fucking died laughing. She loved it. Now you shut up, you eat. <laughs> does that annoy you? Yeah, I was wondering, does that annoy you if your wife does that? Like, I'm trying to think if it annoys me if she laughs at somebody taking a dig at me. Yeah, it bugs me. It, it, it reminds- depends on the laugh. Yeah. I've had a couple of big fights with that. Now I don't give a fuck. I, you know, you kind of, you know, expect it. <laughs> I just give a, I'll give a look and then I'll just, it'll be a fight later. I'll be like, the fuck was, you know, what was that? You fuck, you know, and then afterwards I'll be like, you fucking enjoyed that. My wife said one time she goes, you know, it's just funny to see people shut you up every once in a while. (laughs) You know, what? good for her for saying I actually laughed at that. I was like, all right, well, maybe I should fucking quit running my yap so much. When uh, Eddie Murphy, it's one of the greatest bits of raw. When he goes, don't you ever disrespect Italians? He goes, don't you yeah. ever disrespect you? Fu- I'll put this glass in your fuck. Don't you ever disrespect? And he said, everything's a question. He goes, what am I an asshole? Yeah. <laughs> what am I a fucking asshole? It's so true. It's so true, dude. No, that's um, awesome. All right, dude, we got to wrap this yeah. up because you know, Paul, yeah, I, I have a little window here. I'm gonna go smoke. I got. A stick. I gotta go hug my son, dude. I gotta go find him, hug him, and I'm taking him out to dinner. Can Did you I tell go- him how how proud Uncle Bill is? I definitely will. I'll tell dude, him. You, you have no idea the adrenaline jolt I got the second you read. I shot the lights out. I was like, dude, he, he fucking. That wrote was like that. you know you didn't see the game. He just checked the score. And your team wins, You're- dude. The kid knocks down threes from the corner like you, dude. John Wallace, NBA player, dude. You shot his per. Uh, Chrissy D, who's got a record at St. Joseph's, goes, oh, that kid's got a Jimmy. <laughs> that kid's got a Jimmy. He does, man. He's, you know, but um, so I'm going to go do that. But thank you guys so much for listening, uh, for coming out to my shows at the Stress Factory, for oh, everything. Um, Paulie's off the clock as far as stand-up until January, but we're going to give you this show every week. Um, that's pretty much it, right, Andrew? Go go to uh, the new the, the merch store, get our merch. And uh, off the clock, Paul, you know what? Next December, I want to be off the clock. I'm doing this. I'll I'll go visit you. I'm just clocking out after tomorrow night and I'll be home. I told Stacy, I go, Stace, your husband's going to be home for 30 days. She goes, God help me. (laughs) I know they get used to us being gone. All right, right, brother. Have a great one. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.